All right, we'll come to standing pose at the top of the mat, coming into Tadasan Mountain Pose. And take just a few moments here to situate your feet under your hips, heels under your sit bones, hips over your heels, knees over your ankles, arms next to your side. Lift up from behind your belly button. Stack your shoulders over your hips. Breathe around your belly so the belly expands, breathing around the belly button lift that I just said to kind of pull up behind so that engaged abdominal wall is not inhibiting your breath and making it harder to breathe. So you're breathing around this abdominal contraction and enhancing the breath with the abdominal contraction. Try not to over squeeze your glutes or your thighs and just feel your hips level. Letting some weight drop down into the center of your heels. Just standing here on your own two feet, this doesn't take much more teaching than just that. Stand on your two feet. You wanna feel the natural curvature of your low back. So we're not trying to flatten or tuck the tailbone. That's why I was saying relax your glutes a little bit. They don't need you to work much here. They're not extending your hips beyond anatomical extension, so there's really no work, extra work for your glutes to be done here. Thighs are softly engaged. Again, let the weight drop down into the center of your heels. Abdominals are more engaged than the glutes, honestly. But not so much, again, that you cannot breathe. And then you feel your ears over your shoulders and the back of your head over the back of your hips. You can even close your eyes down here if you want. All right, so we're gonna move here into the next position. I'm gonna step my left foot back and I'm gonna turn and face the edge of my mat, widen out my stance. Press straight down into your feet hands on hips, without letting your hips move back, exhale, fold. If you'd like the chair under your hands here or a couple blocks under your hands, I'm gonna take my fingertips down to the floor and then resist the temptation to let your weight fall back into your heels. Take the weight forward into the balls of your feet, not so much that your heels lift, but so you can feel there's work on the front of your thighs because your hips are flexed there's stretch in the back of your hamstrings, there's stretch on your inner thighs, and there's a pressing down in your feet, creating that extra work in the front of your thighs for the hip flexion. Your hands can come flat on the floor, and they're under your shoulders, but not under your shoulders where your hips move back, right? So if your hands move under your shoulders, your shoulders don't move back. Now, if your hands move back into the area of your feet, shoulders stay forward. Okay, then the head would come down and your hands could walk back, but you're not sending your shoulders back. It's just gonna put extra strain on your sit bones and on the attachments of the hamstrings. Keep the knees pointing in the same direction as the second toe so the knees aren't turning out or in. So you're not collapsing down to your inner foot. You're pressing into both edges of the mounds of the ball of the foot and the center of the heel, inner arches lift of both feet. And then the knees, the kneecaps are pointing in that same direction as the second toe, so it's going that way. Squeeze the thighs to pull your kneecaps up, press down into your feet to deepen this forward fold. Keep your chest open, use the muscles on your upper back to draw your collarbones apart. And just breathe natural breath in and out of your nose. Right, and then on your inhale, come back up halfway, push down into your feet again, reaffirm that press, hands to your hips. Next inhale, finish coming up to stand. And then you can step up to Tadasan, top of your mount, ma top of your mat, mountain pose.
Go ahead and bend your knees here, Utkatasan. Reach your arms up, inhale. Sit down towards your heels with your sitting bones. So you're not sitting back. You shouldn't be able to look down and see your feet. You should cover your, most of your feet with your knees and look down and only see the first two toes, the big toe and the second toe. And then left, uh, lift your gaze up, lift your arms up. Knees are pointing straight forward so they're not kneeling in, they're not squeezing in together. Because now if I look, the knee is kind of pointing down to my big toe. I want that center of my knee, the patella, to point in the same direction as my second or even third toe. So again, there's just a slight space between your knees with your hands so you could look down and see your big toe and second toe. Knees are bending forward and down, not back. So they're not vertical shins here. They're in a diagonal line going back, really engaging the front shin muscles. This is a massive back bending posture, so really express the low back, lift the upper back is strong, lifting up off the low back so you're not pinching the lumbar. And then press to straight leg stand, samastitihi. Garudasan, Eagle Pose. Bend your knees again. And then the right foot is going to lift, walk over to squeeze the outside of your left shin. You can stay here, hands at heart. Please feel free to bring a chair in for this and use it for balance. The back of your chair could come up for balance. The option here is to cross your ankle over your thigh if crossing your leg doesn't work for you, especially if you've had hip replacement and you can't cross the midline and internally rotate your thigh. So this is a wonderful modification or prop usage right here. So this will work your thighs, your ankles, core, and really, again, express the natural curvature of your spine so we don't want to be back here, okay? Tucking into the lumbar. Again, if you're crossing, cross the ankle. And if you can, without knee pain, the right toes tuck behind the left knee, but what you're not doing is turning the left knee this way. So see how my left toe is pointing that way, my knee is pointing off that way. That's not good. We want the right knee to point this way, the left knee points straight forward. This left leg is in chair pose. Again, it's not going back. It's at a diagonal, the shin. Okay. And then I'm sitting down on top of my left thigh and squeezing in and up with my core. Right arm can come under the left arm and lift your elbows. So you're lifting from the right arm, lifting the left arm up and then wrapping around or pushing the hands together. Grab the thumb if you can. And then the right hand is pushing the left hand away or the left hand is kind of pulling the right hand away. Not too far though, right? So the vertical forms and horizontal humerus arm bones. Eagle without arms or eagle with. Sit down towards the left heel. Not so much that you could touch down with your right foot and like stand on it, right? That's too far, okay? And if your foot is not hooked, squeeze the outer legs together. And inhale, press to stand, release your arms, and shake out your legs. We'll do the second side. Okay, so again, you can start in that knee bent variation. Use the chair, cross your left leg over the top of your right. Right toes stay pointing straight forward, the right knee stays pointing straight forward. Use the chair for balance or the wall, and you're crossing your ankle over your thigh. And here, if you're crossing the ankle over the thigh for the modification, that's what I meant to say, if you're crossing the ankle over your thigh, kind of sit back a little bit more, so it's not gonna be quite the same. But then, if you can, try to challenge yourself and press down with your knee instead of pulling back, all right? And again, you can tuck the toes, but the right knee is not turning to the right, it's staying straight forward, the left knee is off to the right and the two front hip bones are pointing straight forward. So there's a squeeze in with the hips, but not so much that your low back rounds. 
If you're wrapping your arms here, left arm comes under right, lift your right elbow up with your left and push your left hand away with your right palm once you grab your left thumb or press the palms together. Keep that front hip squeeze, elbows lift. So your elbows aren't down here, right? They're up as high as your shoulders. Low back is neutral. You feel a pull in the upper back. Low back is working actually to keep the back extended naturally. Press your legs to straight. And come out of it. Garudas in the eagle pose. The next pose will work is tree vrikshasan one and two. So for the first one, I'll show you the front view. Your right foot's gonna come up the front of your left leg. Help it up if you need. And then you're gonna turn. So my foot is not on the inside of my thigh. It's on the front inner thigh a little bit. So it's pushing that big quad muscle over. And then I'm gonna turn my heel and turn the toes back. So then my right knee goes out to where it needs to go. So I'm not going. for obvious reasons, hopefully that's obvious. Didn't look real fun, it didn't feel good. So sliding the foot up, that keeps these two hip bones squeezed by the transverse abdominals, the low belly. Pull up, use your hand to help. Then when you rotate, it's on the heel, lifting your toes, turning your toes back down towards the right, towards the left heel, so that you can feel the thigh externally rotating and the knee does not need to come straight out, especially if you're popping the right butt cheek up. So if you're taking this pose, and you can see here, oh look, I got my right knee all the way out to the side, but this is, I'm out of balance, and I'm kind of pressing into that left knee, and it's not feeling good. Up, hook, rotate, Drop the right glutes, lift the left front hip. Two front hip bones draw in together, squeeze this belly here. Lift, push your outer left hip, push your outer right hip. So you're pushing into the right foot from the outer left hip, not from your inner thigh. You're pushing into the left thigh, not from your foot, so not from here, not from here, and not from here, but from out here, squeezing in with the outer hips, and then your arms can reach. Vrikshasan one. Gazing right down past the bridge of your nose for the Nasagra Drishti, the, the tip of the nose gaze, or the bridge of the nose gaze. Okay, and then Vrikshasan two, you would take your ankle, your heel, over to the left hip, and then the outer right ankle is pressing into your left front thigh without, so we don't wanna do this, right? So this isn't the pose. Use a chair here if you need, or keep your hand on your, on your right foot so you can keep your left hand on your right foot and start to press forward using your left hamstring and glutes, pressing this left hip into the right foot. And then if you want, hands can come up. You've got to squeeze the back of your right thigh. So the hamstrings. Vrikshasan two. Okay. And then let your right leg come down. And then you can step your feet apart and just kind of sway your hips a little side to side. It gets tiring in the hips. All right, we'll do the second side. Left foot's gonna come up the right leg. Heel on the front third, inner third of my thigh. It turns open. And then I'm squeezing in right away with those two front hip bones, outer right hip. And try not to let your foot push, the left foot push the right foot off the floor. So press back down into the inside of the right foot, the big toe mound. And again, the knee is coming out at an angle. If it comes out all the way, fine, but we're not taking it out and tilting the hips to do that. The left toes are pointing back down towards the inner right heel. 
squeeze in with the hips, squeeze the center line with the hips. Instead of pushing your foot into thigh and thigh into foot, squeeze the midline with your whole body. Not like this, but in from the outside, in. And then you can have your arms out at heart or up to the ceiling. Again, gazing down past the bridge of your nose, open your arms, straighten your arms out using your triceps. If you wanted to add on to Rikshasan 2, the left heel now comes up to the right hip bone or hip crease. Use your right hand to hold it. And you could reach your left arm up. You're working on squeezing the back of your left glute. So this right, this left foot might slide down a little bit. It's gonna go all the way down though. So be careful with that. So you really have to push back into the foot with your right thigh. And my side, this side doesn't like to stay so much. So it's like wah, 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 sliding down slowly but surely. So I'm gonna hold on to it. And I'm working on squeezing my right glutes and hamstrings and pushing into that left heel and then creating a resistance. The left heel presses back into the thigh, not the knee pushing down, but the heel pushing back into the thigh. Zip in here. All right, and then slowly let that left leg come down. Rikshasan in two. All right, so the next one I'll do is Trikonasan, triangle pose. So I'm gonna take the chair back here. I'm gonna go from the back view, stepping apart. So I just want you to see the back hip. Turn the left toes in and the right toes forward and the right hand to the chair seat so that this right hip and left hip don't need to turn or open. So I'm not popping the hips out to get my hands to the floor. So I want you to see this hot hip popping out and then I'm twisting up here, pulling on the back of my knee. Instead, I want my hand either to my shin and the hips drawing in together. You're not fitting your body between two panes of glass. That is not the case. We're not a two-dimensional object. Also, you want your left, your right toes to be pointing straight forward. So bend the knee, press down into the ball of your right foot and the heel of your right foot. Drive the floor down with your foot and pull the knee up and let your toes spread out. Then you turn your torso a little bit, not the hips, torso. The hips tilt as a result of leaning down to your leg, not to make room for the side bend. That's gonna pull on the inner right knee, okay? So the hips move as a result of your body moving in the line of your hips, which are facing out this way. My hand comes down. Then I open this shoulder and then turn from the belly button, ribs, upper back, thoracic, okay? So here the hand could be on the chair to keep that right hip from popping out. And even moving it to the chair, the back of the chair seat. And then right from this into side angle. So right now I'm gonna bend my right knee into the chair seat and if it doesn't quite line up that I have to move so what I'm saying is if my knee moves beyond my ankle it's not the end of the world but that just means your stance is too short it means you're not going to get very far with that it's going to feel crunched up so take your foot forward so that you can bend your knee into the chair seat the right hand is going to come out onto the chair seat and then you can take your elbow to the chair seat and stretch your left arm up above head and look up to your left hand so your elbow and your knee are in line. The shoulder is behind the knee. So your my inner elbow and my outer knee are in line. Because eventually you'll take this down to the floor and have the arm, the knee making contact with your arm, okay? So even if this is your pose right here with your hands on the chair seat, and then your elbow on the chair seat, and your other hand staying there, I want you to work the external rotation of that right thigh. Don't smack yourself like that. But you're pushing your right knee out into your elbow and then pressing back into your left heel. So the toes aren't back, the heel is back. 
and that's sending that left hip in the direction of your left toes, pointing in at an angle. This is not a hip opener. It's an inner right thigh stretch, right thigh strengthener, and a twist in the torso, okay? So just be really mindful of that. We should not be opening the hips up behind us. Instead, torso opens. Right, and then you can press up to stand. I'm gonna take my hands to the chair seat and press back. And then in between sides, sometimes it's just nice to forward bend. Okay, let's do the second side. So I'm gonna show you the, in the front view this time. So I'm gonna just leave the chair where it is, step my feet apart. So for trikonasan, the feet are about, I don't know, under your wrists. You play with that. Right toes turn in. So my right heel is the farthest thing behind me. But I didn't just go like this because it takes the feet apart. So get your foot set up first. Like the space in between your feet, I mean. Plant and root down into the right heel. Lift the toes and turn your toes. You may have to lean back. Nothing looks perfect, it doesn't need to be. But the right toes are angled in. Then on my left heel, I turn so my heels are still lined up. All standing postures are heel to heel alignment. Just saying, or actually it's heel to sit bone alignment. So my left heel and sit bone, right heel and sit bone, it's not heel to arch. Um, okay, so again, I want my left toes pointing straight forward. So if I need to bend my knee, and scooch that heel in a little bit. And then I'm gonna drive down into the ball of my foot, the pinky toe mound of my foot, the heel of my foot, and then pull the kneecap up by squeezing my thigh. Then reset back through that right heel. The hips can tilt a little bit, but they're not gonna move so that you can get deeper. They're pointing. So this left hip is that way, this right hip is that way, so they're kind of like this. And then I'm gonna take my left hand either to the chair seat or the left hand to the shin. Left hand to the shin I like, so you can push your shin back into your hand and keep the knee from hyperextending. And try to resist the left knee falling in. Also, don't over-rotate it behind. I got injured that way. It was from an adjustment. I didn't do it myself, but my leg got yanked back and I got something got torn in here, so be careful with that. You can take your left hand out on the chair seat, then your hips can move to allow for those hips to stay open and steady so that the head of the femurs can roll in the hips safely. Then you can reach your right arm up, or you can keep stretching your left hand out, but keep pressing down into both feet equally. And look up to your right hand because sometimes when you look down, your right hand goes over here or back here, and when you look up, you can see your right hand is right over the shoulder. This left shoulder is open. And I'm knitting in with the ribs here. My belly is again engaged, but not so much that I can't breathe. And then right here, I can move right into that side angle. So I'm gonna drive back into my right heel as I bend my left knee towards that chair. Then when, that, when I do that, if my legs are not far apart enough, it's gonna look like this. The right hip's gonna be way up too far. There we go. And again, my elbow can come to the chair seat or your hand can come to the chair seat, but you're on the outside of that elbow and also don't let this hip drop. So if this hip is dropping down and your butt's poking back to give this leg a break, squeeze up, push down through the heel, press forward with your left knee. There's a lot of stretch in here, but I can feel it's working. It's actually working, okay? This is working, this is working, the outer hips are working, my leg is abducted, it's externally rotated slightly, but it's really bending forward and flexing, so this is all working, the psoas. Press back with the right heel, and then the right arm can come overhead. And then again, try not to let that left hip drop, so lift up. Don't let your left sit bone drop. Lift the left hip bone off your left thigh. Good. and then try to keep this left shoulder open so you're not crunching up here. Taking my hands down, whew, stepping back. Give those legs a break. Be careful with your chair. Mine slid off my mat. I was lucky, it didn't go anywhere, but be careful. And then a little bit of a stretch out here. You could take downward facing dog on the chair if you want, or plank pose on the chair, and then a little upward facing dog here. Okay. 
and then downward facing dog would be pushing your hips back. All right, and then warrior three from here. So we're gonna take the hands to the chair seat and stand in a half forward fold. So in your half forward bend, your head hopefully is about as high as your hips. And that's maybe a little high for me and this is a little low for me. So you might want a couple bricks or if you've got blocks handy, you could put them under your elbows. And I just wanna feel this sensation of my back muscles working. So what you could do, be careful not to just sit here and lean back. So take your knees forward a little bit, soft bend in your knees, so I'm not too much, just a little bit. And then zip up my belly. And then my, I'm just, I'm just floating, okay? Dig in with your toes, man, that's what they're there for. They're there for balance, let your toes help you. In warrior three, your hips have to go back a little bit. You can't stay here. Your head weighs too much, you'll go down. So you kind of have to send your hips back once you get into the, to the balance, but I'm not doing it in this pose where I'm putting all the weight back into my hips. So here, if you wanted your elbows on the block still, hips kind of go back, knees soft bend, and then float. Then feel that pull in the hips, the work in the front of your thighs, the work in the front of your belly. I often, this chair is just not working out for me, so I really like to do this instead, two blocks. This is really what I like better. Now I can at least balance, it doesn't feel awkward, and there's a slight back bend. I always get told I need to flatten my back out here. I'm sorry, that's just not okay for me, especially when my arms start to come overhead, because in any pose where your arms are above head, there's an extension in your spine, and then I get told to do this. And that's really nice when I have to balance and then fall because I'm doing some weird, awkward thing. Let your body do its natural thing. Um, and just keep in mind, we don't have to look like each other. So I'm gonna take my hands on the blocks. God, please don't, you know, you don't wanna look like each other, right? You wanna be yourself. Hands on the blocks, head up as high as your hips. Nice little back bend. So I'm not saying do, you know, pop the booty or something. Zip your belly up a little bit. So instead of dropping down, lengthen. Instead of rounding, lengthen, okay? So I'm lengthening my spine using my back muscles. Then I'm gonna take my heels in a little closer together, my feet a little closer together, and then I'm just gonna take this right leg back and touch down with my right big toe. Soft bend in that left knee, lift my chest, look forward, and then lift from the inner right thigh, glutes and hamstrings, and then lower back down. Bend your knees, stretch it out a little bit, kind of like cat-cow, and then we'll go to the second side. On the fingertips, head is about as high as my hips, maybe just slightly higher. My right foot comes back, I push down into my right, my left foot goes back, I push down to my right foot, and then a soft bend in my right knee so that I can then start to lift my left heel up using the glutes and the hamstrings and the inner thigh, so I'm not lifting the outer hip, okay? It's the inner hip lifting up to the ceiling. Lengthen your back muscles with your core and your back spine, and then lower down. Soft bend, round, and then come up to stand. One of my favorite ways to practice this pose then, that's just kind of a little prep, is to take the chair, the seat faces away, fold it up, and then press the seat at a, um, the legs are at an angle on the edge of the chair back goes into my hip creases. And then I'm gonna take my hands down. So this is also really helpful because you can see my hips have to go back a little bit, right? So they're going back. And then from here, I'm not leaning, right here I'm not leaning. I'm pulling up away from the chair. Right foot comes back. Push into the chair with your hip creases, not your belly, and then lift your right inner thigh without letting the right hip come off the chair. And then if you really wanted to, this kind of gets treacherous because the chair can lift, left hand can come forward. And then maybe even look forward. Good. Take your left hand down, take your right foot down. And come to stand. Then we'll do the second side. All right. Take as long as you need between sides. Don't rush it. 
going back into the angle of the chair, hands come down on the chair legs, I'm pressing into the chair seat back with my inner th with my thighs, the front of my hip creases, head is forward. So again, I'm not overextending. So I'm lifting my back ribs up a little bit. And here's what I'm talking about. Usually people come up and say, oh, you got to get this back flat. And I can't stand that. Your back's not flat. It should never be flat. So don't try to make it flat. Okay. I'm going to use my hands on the chair legs. I'm going to take this left foot back. I'm going to take my left foot back. I notice if my left hip comes off the chair or if my heel turns in. I don't want that. I want the heel to stay back. It's just my left big toe, um, pinky toe on the floor, right? And then the chair, I'm pushing into it with my hip creases, lifting my head up just as high as my hips. It's hard to see, so just kind of feel it. And then the left leg can lift from the inner left thigh. And then here, if you take your hand down to the chair rungs in the center, your chair won't wobble around. And then you can try to lift your right hand. Eventually you'll have both hands forward. Use your left glutes, hamstrings, and your thigh presses up. Your left ankle can flex, I don't care. It can point however it works best for you. Lift those ribs, but try not to flatten that low back. Good, hand down, leg down, bend the knees. Roll up, you don't need to be there any longer than you get what I'm saying, right? Okay, warrior three, Vera three. That's all she wrote on that one. Okay, let's do um, a little seated. Let's come to seated, I just wanna stretch out a little bit. I think that's good for standing poses for this class. I'm gonna come down to a seated position. And I want to actually show you some really cool ways I've been playing with Lotus and Bound Angle. Um, which it does require a couple bolsters. I'll be back. All right, so I've got my two bolsters here. Sorry if that was loud. Two bolsters. We're going to stack them up lengthwise, one on top of the other. And I've got a third one just in case I need three. Just depends. So these bolsters are pretty old and they've gotten some good use out of them. It's a little squishy, but that's the way I like them, nice and broken in. Um, so if you want a third, have it handy. I know I'm gonna want three, so I'm just gonna have it there. You could also go up to a wall. If you've got a wall space open, you could go use that, okay? So just to start, I'm gonna come up just as I would on the wall, hip to the block or to the stack of bolsters, <laughs> things, <laughs> or the wall, and lie down. I'm gonna get pretty close to the, to the bolsters so my feet can come up on the bolsters and I can feel the support. So I'm just gonna kinda of inch my way in there. And I'm here in a super comfy, reclining, wide angle. So another add-on here is putting a belt around your back and hooking it around the bottom of your feet to keep your feet pulled in a little tighter. You could also use your hands here. Okay. So this is bound angle on your back. Just step one to this process. Stay here if this is good enough. Step two then is I'm gonna to start to take my left foot over so my right ankle can come up, heel into the left hip crease. And then I've got my left shin, my ankle. So this part of my ankle and shin are resting on the edge of this bolster. I'll show you on this side. So here on the bolster, Oops, it's sliding away now on this side for some dumb reason. Ugh, heel up first, I guess maybe I should do it. Heel into the hip crease, and then I'm gonna pull this ankle down. There we go. And then that can rest on the bolster right there. All right, this is just harder for me. Okay, so this is half lotus, all right? Um, I mean, you're welcome to have the ankle hang out over the bolster. You're welcome to keep your leg up here and the hip, you know, the heel can come in. But I just, or even like your foot on the bolster, just love this because it gives you some place for your left foot to go instead of pulling down and fighting this posture. Lotus Padmasan is coming into the center of your body. And when you're on the floor or seated, it's really common to have your lotus fan out away from your body because of ankle and knee and hip. Um, immobility. So this is really helpful here. Okay, you could take this on both sides and then if you wanted to you could start to take the other foot up into your full lotus. Be careful of your knees and hips and then you've got the bolsters behind you for relaxation. They're just there holding your legs up so you don't have to do this. And this is a nice way for you to work gravity free, compression free lotus. And you can stay here. 
And you're welcome to get both sides again if you want to stay in your lotus on one side or both sides. If you know that you can't do the other side, I would suggest full lotus, I would suggest doing the half lotus at least just to get used to doing both sides lotus so it's not um, tearing up one side and not the other or stretching it and then it's gonna over stretch it and tear it up. Okay. Let's take that out, foot down. When you come out of it, you can just let your legs rest over the bolster and kind of scooch away from it. Then I'm gonna get my second side in. I'm gonna take my left heel up into my right hip crease. And then I'm gonna take this over into the half lotus so you could stay here. You could use your hands to help hold the heel in place. Again, you want your knees to move in toward each other and you want this to close in, not spread apart. So eventually your thighs are pretty parallel with each other. Yeah. And then rest your thighs back on the bolster. Let your back relax open. In a seated position, you'd be jamming down into your hips. Your pelvis would not be allowed to rotate. So there's this tilt that's happening that allows for the thighs to rotate better and to get my heels up into place. Um, also, your spine would be shortening and compressing. You wouldn't be able to breathe as much. I just really think this is one of the best ways to approach lotus is on your back. Again, using the wall as an, addition, as a, an option. And again, half lotus, right? So don't force your foot in, especially if it hurts the knees. And then when you're ready, slide that guy out and it goes back on the bolster. And there you are. Let your legs rest. So since you have this lovely stack of bolsters, you might as well use them for a very lovely forward fold. So I'm gonna scooch away a little bit so I can roll off, come up to seated. And then I'm gonna turn back over here, open my legs out wide, and I've got this stack of bolsters here so I can ease into a very supported wide angle pose. And the bolsters are also there. You can pull them in a little closer to get the legs a little farther apart if you want that extra oomph. So the bolsters don't always make this easier. Keep that in mind. Sometimes the bolsters and the props make it harder. So I've got one bolster coming up into my inner thighs, the other bolster kind of stair-stepping into my belly, and then I'm forward folding over to the other bolster. I like that, that feels really good. You could even angle this up a little bit more. But keep pressing out through your feet and the inner feet are pressing out. Your pelvis is anteriorly tilting here, so you've got the sit bone stretching back, the pubic bone rolling down to the floor, and that's aiding in the extra stretch in your outer feet, or in your inner thighs. Your outer feet are pulling back towards your outer hips. Sometimes I get ahead of myself, mentally. <laughs> And a good time to stay here is about a minute. So let's just do a few more breaths here. Cool thing here is if you've got these bolsters under your belly, you can really breathe into the bolsters with your abdomen and feel that diaphragmatic breath so that your diaphragm is actually pulling the breath in and pumping it out and it's not from your chest or your upper neck area. All right, then on your inhale, come up to seated. And you can restack your bolsters back out. <clears throat> I'm going to scooch back, take my legs together, and I'm going to sit next to my stack of bolsters here. So I've got my right hip next to my bolsters, and I'm just going to gently twist off to the side. You could definitely bend your right knee and pull in with the bolster to the right knee and twist off to the right. Press out through your left foot. You can look right over your chest or over towards the um, past the right collarbone. Keep your chest moving through your shoulders though, so keep pulling back on the bolster and pulling your chest beyond your thigh. So you eventually want this left set of ribs to come towards that right thigh. And 
more, and then release that. And then you're gonna switch sides so you can come around. Taking my left hip up to the bolsters. And then I'm gonna twist, you don't have to bend your knee, but you can. You're kind of pulling this bolster into you, right? And then if you want, you can bend the left knee and pull the bolster into your thigh. Press out to your right foot. Keep your inner left foot lined up with your inner right thigh so it's not under your right thigh. So keep pushing your left ankle out into the bolster a little bit. So I mean, mine's not touching the bolster, but I'm pushing it in, I'm walking it in that direction so that the ankle isn't in and the knee's not out. So the knee and the second toe line up. Again, chest through your shoulders, press out through your right foot. Okay, and then inhale, release your twist. I'm gonna drop this down to two bolsters set up, and I'm gonna lay back into a back bend. Maybe one bolster for you, if that's better. So I'm gonna open my heart back up, and I'm gonna hold my head with my hands, just opening up the chest here. If you want that third bolster, or if you wanna drop down to a second bolster, I mean, it's all the same. Take it under your head. You can even take the top of your head to the bolster for fish pose, set um, matsyasin. And if that's what your po practice, if that's a posture you're practicing is matsyas, and it's like you're squeezing the back of your head towards the bolster under your chest, under your upper heart, okay? Or the back of your heart. You could also take your legs into bound angle or lotus if you want. And keep squeezing the bolsters with your shoulder blades and pressing down into the shoulder, into the bolsters with your triceps and your elbows. So the shoulder blades are pulling in and under, pressing your chest up to the ceiling, pressing into the bolster with your head or the floor if you've dropped down to one under your heart. And then lift your knees if you have them open. Scoot your butt away. Come up to, so scoot your butt away, away, away. Come up to elevated head and press into your thighs with your hands. And just release the back bend before you do anything else. And then you can come up to seated. And you can stay in a seated position for the rest of your practice. You could take Shavasana. If you want to use those bolsters, one can come down underneath the backs of your knees and or the backs of your thighs and the other can come down under your upper back again. Well, they have to come a little closer. <laughs> and then you can take a waterfall here. It's another back bend, but it's not as intense as fish. If you don't want any kind of back bend at all, get this out of here. Bye. Yeah. There you go. And rest. And just let it feel good. Take a few moments to get yourself situated. Let it, anything go that needs to be worked out. Any squeezing that has to be done. Any kind of shaking, twisting, stretching. And then just take a few moments to rest in Shavasana. And as always, bow to you at the end of your practice. And tell yourself thank you and good job.